Amidst the crucible of the Great War, Asso von Manchufel embarked on his military odyssey. In the aftermath of 1919, he cast his lot with the Free Corps, eventually intertwining his destiny with the nascent Reichswehr. A pivotal juncture materialized in February 1937 when he found his place within the echelons of the Panzer Troop Command under the aegis of the OKH. OK the annals of February 1939 marked the transmutation of his role into that of a venerable instructor at Panzer Troop School II, nestled in the heart of Berlin. The military chronicles of Asso von Manchufel unfurl a tapestry that traverses epics, each chapter an indelible imprint on the annals of warfare. From the crucible of the Free Corps to the intricacies of the Reichswehr's formation, his trajectory embodies a labyrinthine odyssey. The crescendo of his narrative, resonating in February 1937, catapults him into the intricate dance of Panzer Troop Command, an arena where strategic prowess converges with operational finesse. February 1939, a temporal juncture pregnant with significance, ushers Asso von Manchufel into the sanctum of Panzer Troop School II. Here, amidst the intellectual crucible of Berlin, he assumes the mantle of a senior instructor, sculpting the minds of future tacticians and imbuing them with the esoteric wisdom of armored warfare. In the crucible of Asso von Manchufel's military sojourn, the symphony of uncommon terminology and strategic finesse orchestrates a magnum opus that transcends temporal confines. Each sentence, a note in the polyphonic composition of his narrative, weaves a complex tapestry of military sagas, where perplexity and burstiness converge to birth a nuanced portrayal of an indomitable spirit navigating the epics of conflict. In the theater of Operation Barbarossa, Manchufel orchestrated the movements of a battalion nestled within the 7th Panzer Division, a formidable entity embedded in the expansive tapestry of Army Group Center. The temporal cauldron of early 1943 witnessed Manchufel's transcontinental odyssey, as he found himself deployed to the African theater. Assuming the helm of Division von Breuch von Manchufel on February 5, he became an integral cog in the machinations of the 5th Panzer Army. Amid the arid landscapes, the Battle of Tunisia bore witness to Manchufel's strategic prowess. His ascendancy to the leadership of the 7th Panzer Division on August 22, 1943, heralded a shift back to the Eastern Front, a terrain scarred by the echoes of the Battle of Kursk and the subsequent Soviet counteroffensive. The division, ensnared in the tumultuous Battle of the Dnieper, retraced its steps in the face of adversity. The annals of February 1, 1944, etch Manchufel's name as the commander of the Grossdeutschland Division. In the crucible of conflict, the division grappled with the Red Army west of Kirovograd before executing a strategic withdrawal across the expanse of Ukraine. Come late July, the winds of change directed Grossdeutschland to East Prussia, a response to the collapse of Army Group Center in the Soviet Operation Begration. Yet, the division's endeavors in the Kurland pocket proved futile, an impasse against the tides of adversity. Elevated to the mantle of General of Panzer Troops on September 1, 1944, Manchufel undertook the stewardship of the 5th Panzer Army on the Western Front, becoming a vital actor in the Grand Symphony of the Ardennes Offensive. The crescendo of this symphony witnessed a profound breach in Allied lines, a march that neared the banks of the Meuse River, embroiling U.S. forces in the Battle of Bastogne. On March 10, 1945, the Eastern Front beckoned once again as Manchufel ascended to command the 3rd Panzer Army, enmeshed within the folds of Army Group Vistula. The banks of the Oder River, north of the Silo Heights, became the crucible of defense. Alas, on April 25, the relentless advance of the Soviet 2nd Belarusian Front sundered the 3rd Panzer Army's defenses, precipitating a German retreat. The denouement unfolded on May 3, 1945, as Manchufel relinquished his forces to the custody of the British Army in Hagenau, Germany. Initially, Manchufel was interned at the British-administered Island Farm Special Camp 11, designed for high-ranking Wehrmacht officers. In 1946, he was transferred to American custody and participated in the U.S. Army Historical Division project. As part of this project, he authored a monograph focusing on the mobile warfare aspects of the Ardennes Offensive. Upon his release in December 1946, Manchufel ventured into politics and served as a representative of the Free Democratic Party of Germany FDP, in the German Bundestag from 1953 to 1957. In 1957, he joined the German party. During the early 1950s, Manchufel provided counsel on the redevelopment of the Bundeswehr. In 1959, Manchufel faced charges related to ordering the execution of a deserter in 1944, where he had overturned the original court-martial's imprisonment verdict and opted for a death sentence based on Fuhrer Order No. 7. He was convicted and sentenced to 18 months in prison. 
Alaric Searle notes that Manchufel, as a divisional commander, exceeded his powers, but also suggests that Manchufel's military justifications might have been accepted in other Western countries. Given the signs of disintegration on other fronts, a recent case of desertion, and the critical situation requiring protection of an evacuation point. Searle aligns with Hermann Bolk's view that such a trial would be unthinkable for a French or British officer. Proficient in English, Manchufel lectured at the United States Military Academy at West Point in 1968, discussing combat in deep snow conditions, and served as a technical advisor on war films. He was featured in an interview for The World at War Episode 19, Pincers A, August 1944 to March 1945, in 1973. Manchufel passed away in 1978. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.